YouTube, Cat Machine here, back for another video, and today we're going to be talking about Hellfrost. This could be a bit of a bundle review, so uh, you have to bear with me as I breeze through this, you know, in a reasonable pace. Um, people have been asking me recently what Hellfrost is, because I have mentioned it in a couple of my videos, and Hellfrost is effectively this. This is a Savage World game, we've talked about this before, video down below as to the review of this. Short answer, buy it, it cost me £10 in the UK, Lord only knows how cheap it is in other countries. Uh, it's a fantastic game, core, core mechanics for not only running your own pulp games but also having great fantasy games, great sci-fi games and lots of other games use this as core mechanics, you need this book. If you're role playing and you don't have this book, there's something wrong with you! But we're not talking about that today, we're talking about Hellfrost, which is a product of AAA games. I believe I've spoken to their guys before, and every time I go to UK Games Expo, I spend an awful lot of time at their store. They're a great bunch of people. This year on the Game Expo, I played a lot of their games, really, really enjoyed myself. I'm going to have to look into their other settings, but for the time being, this is my baby in terms of what I GM. Hellfrost is effectively a fantasy setting for the Savage Worlds, but as with everything Savage Worlds these days, there is always a twist to it, and the twist here is it's, it's very Norse mythology, very Saxon, uh, Celtish, Norse, that kind of thing basically. So there's a very mix of Northern Europe in there, and the idea is that the, well, the Viking end of times has come and gone. Um, for those of you not in the know, the Viking or one of the Viking myths of the end of the world is that the Frost Giants would descend down from north and destroy the world. And in this, the Frost Giants did actually descend down from the north and they did destroy an awful lot and killed an awful lot of people. And there was a big massive war over it, but they stopped. Something stopped them and they retreated back up north again. And overnight, this massive ice wall, kind of think about the wall in uh, Game of Thrones, you get a rough idea, erected itself uh, overnight blocking off what's now a region now known as the Hellfrost from the rest of the world, which is effectively the polar ice cap. So what you've got is a uh, hell and earth kind scenario mixed in with Antarctic conditions. So that's where the setting gets its name from. But the second twist to it is that ever since this event has happened, and this is event has happened like 200 years ago in the setting based on current day, the winters have been getting longer the summers and the springs and have been getting shorter and it's been getting colder so basically what you've got basically is your fantasy setting where you're all playing viking-esque characters or saxon-esque or celtish-esque you know characters running around trying not to freeze to death and also having standard generic adventures built around that idea You've got your elves, as you would expect, you've got your dwarves, but they've all got uh, like an elf, uh, frosty trait to them, like you've got your frost dwarves and you've got your tiger elves. Tiger elves are very much um, elves that decide not to retreat down south when the, when, when the cold came, so they adapted to it as opposed to running away from it. Kind of like how drow changed when they went underground from uh, being normal to you know living in darkness. You, you get the idea. Um, and then you've got uh, Enro, Engro, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, which are basically halflings and they go around little gypsy caravans. They're viewed with a great deal of distrust from other people, but uh, in turn there is uh, a racial um, respect because they're very. Oh, no, probably not using the right words here. They are distrusted. They're kind of like. Look, most people look up on them like Kenda from Dragonlands because they have been known to steal and things like that, but no one ever dares pick on them because they are very, very vicious. Um, so there is a certain amount of honour to them. If you keep them at arm's length and you don't give them the opportunity, they tend not to steal from you. But stealing in a Viking setting, if you know anything about the Vikings, is actually par for the course, because, as always, going a Vikinging was all about stealing livestock and thralls and um, valuables so that you can actually survive the next winter and that does happen a lot in this game um, so you could write whole um, adventures around defending your stead uh, from others, rival steads uh, others down the other side of the valley or the next valley over for example who really really need food and they, they can't pay for it and they're not in a mood to share so um, yeah, there's a lot of fun to be had if you're into that kind of mythology. 
So to start with, you've got the Player's Guide, and this is the first book that ever came out, and regrettably it did come out a good chunk of the way before all the other books. The reason why that's regrettable is because although this contains literally everything you need to know to play the game, um, you've got your racers, you've got your professions, which are basically like careers that you could potentially have, uh, things like Hearth Knight or um, Druid, you know, get the idea, or you know, archaeologist and things like that, stuff that's uh, Road Warden, um, um, occupation which are specific to the setting and have a place within the universe and how to get them. And you've also got lots of other little feats in there, feats and edges, which give you, on oh, feats and edges, edges, feats, sorry, feats is D&D, that's me being stupid. You've got lots of edges and flaws in here which also relate to the setting, and you've got a fantastic blurb on all the gods, how magic works and magic is very different in this to how it works in Savage Worlds, because you don't have a, a point by system. Uh, however, all spellcasting potentially can suffer from what's known as the siphoning, which is a mm, effect which is going on in the world right now, where magic is slowly being drained out of the world. So that if you roll a 1 on your casting dice, um, you have to roll on the siphoning table, which potentially could do a horrible nasty things to you, or it could just stun you. But there is a repercussion to constantly casting, despite the fact you can do it. Kind of like how um, the second edition of Warhammer did it. Warhammer, yeah, they did the same thing. That could You could cast as much as you wanted in that, but if you scored a 1 or scored a double or a triple, then bad things would happen to you. So, yeah, you've, it's it's a great book in terms of player information. It's a terrible book in terms of GM information. There are constant references in this to uh, groups of people, places, events, and none of it is highlighted in here. There's not even a map in here. Uh, there's no poster map. There's no map within the pages. I mean, Triple H Games have acknowledged this quite quickly uh, as one of their feedback points, and you can download it for free off their website. So I'll be putting their website down below, and you can have a look at all the stuff they've got because there is quite a lot of it now. Um, so as a player guide, it's fantastic. If you are playing this, I recommend you get your hands on a copy of this ASAP. It gets a solid five out of five for me. If you're just into generic um, winter Norse setting. Uh, maybe a 4 out of 5, but it's very intensive towards Savage World. You could take it, and you could adapt it, and you could ignore the fact that there isn't any geography in here, and you can make up your own quite easily. That's what we did when we first got our hands on it, and it's still a fun game to play. Also, it does what Frostburn never did. Now, Frostburn, for those of you who don't know, is one of the setting books that came out towards the end of 3.5 Dungeon Dragons. Um, they, they did one for like the desert, did one for the like, uh, sea, and they also did, a, uh, obviously, a frost one which is Frostburn. Frostburn, as you would need, as you, as you'd expect from any campaign setting where cold is a major element, you need good rules to tell you what happens when you're stuck out in the cold and how you keep it at bay. Now this book has some great rules, and they're not really complicated. They take in the Savage World guidelines of being simple and easy to understand, easy to use, and literally it's just a couple of tick boxes. Once you've accumulated enough bonuses in terms of um, increased vigour um, you can overcome a certain level of cold without having to roll for it and then if you cold exceeds that then you have to start rolling and the frequency of the rolling depends on how big a gap you've got so going into the Hellfrogs for example is something that I wouldn't recommend for starting ventures because without magical assistance they really couldn't survive out there for a short, even for a short period of time the cold would kill them before the frost giants did uh, but further down south in the winter in the, it's not a good idea to go outside in the uh, in the winds. Best to stay indoors, find a cave, find a campsite, big fire, you know, gather around the fire, and you'll have a great night. If you're out in the cold, you are going to die hypothermia, especially if you don't have a fire to back you up. So that is all covered in here. It's a really, really good system. Uh, it doesn't add that much to the core mechanics of Savage Worlds, which is great, but it does add enough to give it flavour. So along with that are also two other books. Now thankfully these are now in print so they're relatively easy to get hold of. Uh, but back when that came out um, they were nowhere to be seen. Although they were hinted that they were coming out in the future but we just didn't know when. And that is uh, The Beastry and The Gazetteer. Now The Beastry is what you would expect. It's basically a monster book for the setting. It does also contain generic stats for humans. Like you, you could give you, stat, you give you stats like bandits and knights and soldiers and... Um, and so on and so forth, you get the idea. You also get some lovely 
setting specific uh, monsters. That's not to say these are real monsters in the world. You can make up your own monsters, take monsters out of other books and put them in. And it's got some really good information. There's not a lot to it per se, other than to say that the book is really well designed. Uh, there's a good mixture of both colour and black and white art. Um, once again, the stats are not too complicated. Not many monsters have complicated rules to go along with them. They are very simple rules if their rules are, of course, outside of the norm. So nothing to worry about in that regards. Uh, if you are GMing it, it's a solid 5 out of 5 from me, that one. Well worth the money. If you're not, I'd skip it. And then you've got the Gazetteer. Now, I bought this, oh, I didn't buy this at all. I bought a copy of this at UK Game Expo this year, uh, along with most of the other so Frost, uh, sorry, Hellfrost stuff I've got, because that was the goal I went to you came so far was to buy lots of this stuff because the guys wanted to play it, I was getting into it I signed up for a couple of games at the UK Game Expo to get a feel for the game again really enjoyed myself and as such I went to their store and I spent an awful lot of money there, probably a bit too much and the Gazetteer um, it's a book I bought and when I got it it had a printing error in it uh, or binding error I think it was described as I had about 8-10 to 10 pages that were missing not like blank, there were just other pages supplementing, so like your page 30 to 31 would actually be page 106, 161. And I've lost about eight pages doing that. Now I emailed Triple H Games to tell them about this and they were great. They basically said, I'm really, really am sorry, we'll send you a replacement out straight away. And they did, and I received it. It's it's in great nick and I'm really happy. So props to Triple H Games out there for having fantastic customer service, uh, being great guys. So cannot give you guys enough praise uh, if you want to give me any free stuff I'd be more than welcome uh, but no need because I'm at the moment going through all your stuff with a fine to come and buying it all um, also I'm um, going to start downloading their PDF so I might talk about that in the future as well but the Gazetteer basically fulfills the problem I had with the player's guide and the fact that there is no setting information. This is full of setting information. And there is a map in here as well which makes things much, much easier. There we go, is it in the back? Yeah, it's in the back. So you get your, you get your setting map and that's what the world looks like. Um, and it's really, really handy. There's lots of good stuff in here. Gives you a really good idea not only how the different nations or different regions act uh, in themselves but also how they interact with their neighbours. Uh, there's lots of little plot hooks in here. There's lots of really good setting uh, bits in here, lots of looming threats that you can investigate. Um, a couple of them sound like they're being kind of half nicked. I mean, there's something called the Lich Priest or the Lich, yeah, the Lich Priest, which is which is this guy who is in charge of this massive undead army. Can anyone say Lich King? But apart from that, um, there's some really good stuff in here. Most nations either live next to or live recently close to something which is a threat so nobody is peacefully safe and sound and content even uh, even the fact that the cold itself that is coming down from north is a problem that's not your only problem you've got other things nearby to deal with and that's where you get your conflict is where you get your good settings from um, so you can't just sit in your laws you have to go fix the world and that's what I love about fantasy adventures that's what I love about this um, there is no post map in here sadly if you want to buy one there's a cloth one they do uh, which is expensive but I'm gonna get it anyway and it's really nice I've actually seen a version of it already and I was really impressed with it so I'm gonna pick up a copy of that I'll probably do a very short video of it when I do get my hands on it so but you don't need a post map for this um, there's a map in the back of here there's also a map on the website free to download and that would be my only gripe I've got with the actual setting uh, I'm really enjoying it they're supporting it really well uh, on the website I mean the guy who wrote this um, Paul Wiggy Wade Williams has got Tourette's or something uh, in terms of writing he just constantly churns out information on a very frequent basis he releases a PDF which usually contains information more in-depth information about a region or a place which is already covered in here gives you more ideas and venture seeds and stuff like that they also write adventures uh, some of which are being collected and put in book format so I might talk about that when I get my hands on that um, so this is a setting that's going places and even with the ever-present looming um, threat of the new Savage Worlds edition I very much doubt this will go out of print 
or will stop at any point um, because the Savage Rules rules adapted uh, coming out appear to just be basically a slight revised version of what we've got at the moment. Kind of how Call of Cthulhu does its editions in the fact that everything predates it is fully compatible and I fully expect that to be the case here. So if you're after a easy to run but really in depth, really characterful and really enjoyable fantasy setting and you like the Norse mythology and you like the Saxon mythology, that kind of thing and the idea of being Vikings in frosty environments really appeals to you I give this whole deal, all three books, a 5 out of 5. If you're only a player, get that and that'll teach you everything you need to know about the game. If you're a GM, I highly recommend all three although I push you could just run with this. Okay guys, thank you for your time. See you later.